If your Ford EcoBoost 1 litre engine is overheating and is getting bubbles in the header tank caused by combustion gases, the chances are it's the head gasket that has gone. And in this video, I will show you how it can be changed. But before we start, here's a sneak peek of the head gasket. Can you see where it's gone? Let me know in a comment below. Right then, let's get started. This procedure is pretty much the same for the turbo and non-turbo version engine. There is a little bit more to take off on the turbo engine. Let's get the coolant out of the way first. Just at the bottom of the radiator, there is a drain plug. Simply release this and the coolant will drain out. Drain it into a suitable container as to not damage the environment. If you're going to start anywhere, you'll probably want to start at the top. So we'll take out the battery and the air box. We need this out of the way to enable us to get to the top bolt on the starter motor later on for when we lock the flywheel off. And gain access to the coolant flange. Just loosen the Jubilee clip and then the air box will just pop out. There's a clamp on top of the battery. This is removed by, with three bolts. And then there is a little bracket at the front that holds the battery in place. With this off and the terminal disconnected, the battery should just lift out. And you should now be able to get to the negative terminal. Unbolt the battery carrier and lift away. The gear cable bracket needs removing. There's a rubber bush at the back. This needs sliding backwards and then the gear cable will slot out and then just remove the three bolts holding the bracket in place. And then you will be able to get to the top starter motor bolt, which you can just see here. Next up, remove the four bolts holding the exhaust heat shield on and unplug the wiring and the heat shield will lift away. Remove the bottom bracket 13 millimeter nuts on the clamp at the bottom near the gearbox. And then there's two bolts where it connects at the flange. Then the three fasteners onto the head and then the exhaust will lower down out of the way. I removed it completely. It's up to you whether you do too. Here's the turbo version. You will have to remove a few more heat shields to get to this. Now let's unclip the remaining wiring and remove the wiring from the top of the engine so that we can remove the coil packs and then we can remove all the bolts in the rocker cover and remove it. Don't worry too much about the gaskets. If you get a decent headset, these will be supplied complete with the kit. Now you will be able to see the wet belt and the cams. These do deteriorate and it will need replacing. So don't skimp on parts. We now need to get the manifold off. So underneath, unbolt the starter motor, just the bottom bolt because you've already done the top one. And then there's a visible bolt that you can see just here. And the remainder of the bolts will be accessible back up top. Here's a little glimpse of where they are. You'll just need to use a small ratchet and a small socket and you will be able to get these out reasonably easy. And now the manifold should be free so that we can remove it from the cylinder head. And then we are at the stage of timing up the engine. I'm not going to go into this too much. I have got a couple of videos, one with the Sealy timing kit and one with the laser kit, you may be using one of these. So if you want to check out the links at the end of the video, this should shine a little bit of light onto the job. So to make it easier for you to do. Just as a personal recommendation, I've used both of these kits and I prefer the laser one. There's a few more bits in the kit and it just seems to do a little bit of a better job in my opinion. But if you want to, to get hold of this kit again i'll put a link in the description for you to to go and check it out so again 
Moving forwards, we've got the manifold loose so we can remove the head away from this when we've got the head bolts out. And then we need to remove the coolant flange, just four bolts. Um, and then this, this comes off nice and easily. Then there's a couple of bolts holding the coolant pipe to the back of the water pump. You'll need to remove this so that the front cover will lift away. The crank sensor wiring can be a little bit of fun, but if you just press this little nodule on the plug here, it will release the mechanism and then the wiring will just unclip. So at this point, just have a, a good check around, make sure that everything's off on the top, obviously apart from the front cover, which we're going to cover next. So now we're going to lock off the flywheel so we can remove the crankshaft pulley bolt. The tightest bolt you've ever undone just be sure to have locked the cams off and the crank on the crankshaft web before you put this in place i always like to make some sort of reference so i just put a, a little tipex mark on the flywheel so that we, we know when we're building it back up that that's where it came down and then pop in the crankshaft timing pin we then need to remove the front cover. There's more on this in the other video that I will be linking to at the end. Just pay attention to the gasket seal that is here. I would definitely replace it because this could cause you problems in the future. Mark up the cams because you're going to remove these and you wouldn't want to get them mixed up when you rebuild it. Remove the end cap and now everything should be disconnected and off of the cylinder head so all that remains to do now is remove the cams and then we can take the head bolts out and remove the head so lift away the caps and then lift off the cam like so might be a little bit tight um mark it up to make sure you know which is the top for when you retime it up later on i always like to lay things out as they've come off so you know exactly where they go in the same order somewhere nice and clean and remove the valve buckets now all we need to do is remove the cylinder head bolts these are not torx bolts they're a special tool as you can see here you can get the part number check out our link tree page here you will be able to find the additional tools and some of the parts we used for this job and once the bolts are out, we can lift the cylinder head off and we can see what we can find. And upon the first inspection, we can see that cylinder one, piston crown, is all clean. So this is where the coolant's been getting. And this engine had a misfire and we can see this where the head gasket has gone between cylinder one and two. Maybe yours has similar issues too. So now the engine is all stripped down, you will need to have the head, cylinder head skimmed and pressure tested to ensure there's no additional faults. And then we need to give the cylinder block a really good clean down and also clean out the bolt holes. This is very important. If we don't do this, then the bolt cannot fasten down properly and could cause another cylinder head problem later on now once you've got the headset we need to change all the gaskets and seals most of these seals come with the headset but if they don't i would definitely advise you replacing them here's the new head gasket pop it onto the dowels if the dowels are a little bit low it's worth just lifting them up slightly so that the head gasket is in the correct place these gaskets just lift out and then we can just put the new ones in. You'll notice that they mount a little bit higher. Obviously, as time goes on, they become flat. So all the new gaskets will seal much better. And here's the cylinder head, all skimmed with no issues on the pressure test, all ready for us to put back onto the engine block. Carefully lift the cylinder head back onto the engine block and just ensure that it locates onto the dowels that we saw earlier and then put in the replacement cylinder head bolts. 
don't forget to follow in the tightening sequence and the torque settings for the cylinder head bolts. And here is a quick breakdown of the torque stages and settings. Once that job's done, you can refit the buckets and then the cams. Just make sure you put the right cam in the right place and also be very wary that it is in the top dead center position. If not, this could cause damage to the valves when tightening up the caps for the cams. And as before, observing the numbers and the order from removal. I would highly recommend running these bolts down by finger and then we're just with a quarter inch ratchet and then obviously tighten them to the correct torque setting. And when that's done, you can replace the timing lock tools on top of the cams. Make sure that you've got plenty of time and patience for this process because it can be fiddly and you wouldn't want to do any damage and have to repeat the whole process at additional cost to yourself. And here is a tip that I discovered when rebuilding the engine. If you remove the throttle body, it allows a little access to the manifold bolts when tightening the manifold back up. So now we can refit the tensioner and the cam belt, release the pin and the timing should be spot on. And as always, I would recommend turning the engine to full revolution with the front covers back on and ensure that the timing is correct. All that remains to do is make sure all the surfaces are clean, put some fresh sealant on and bolt the front cover back on. If you noticed when you removed the front cover, there are two bolts, this one here and one on the lower right hand side that has a guide on it to locate the front cover centrally. If you put these two in first and then put the remaining bolts in afterwards. Don't tighten them up just yet though. Put the crank pulley on and loosely tighten the bolt and then you can tighten the remaining bolts on the front cover. Now that the front cover is nice and tight, we can put the pin into the crankshaft pulley and tighten the bottom pulley bolt. Remember, this is a free floating crank pulley. You can now reinsert the cam pulley tools just to ensure that the timing is correct as it was before we stripped down the engine. Now is a good time to put the engine mount back on. And as always when doing a timing belt, I would recommend removing all the timing tools, turning the engine to full revolutions and then making sure that the timing lock pins fit back in the same place. This ensures that there can be no faults made with the timing. And it's also worth noting, when you're turning the crankshaft, if the engine stops turning, you know that there's something seriously wrong and you'll need to obviously repeat what you've done. Just to recap, turn the engine just before TDC, insert the crank lock tool that you can see here, then turn the crankshaft the remainder of the way until it locks. And as you can see, I made a tip X mark on the crankshaft pulley to give us an extra reference. Then insert the pin on the crank pulley. This ensures that the crank timing's right. And then followed by the camshaft lock tools. And these should just slot on nicely. And that's it. The job should be fantastic. And we can refit the starter motor and rebuild the remaining items on the engine. Don't fully tighten the bottom starter bolt until you've got the top one in. And once that's done, we can refit the gear cables mounting bracket, followed by the battery carrier 
and the battery and anything else that we've removed earlier on in the process. By now you should have rebuilt almost everything and get the auxiliary belt on and then refill the oil with a new oil filter and the correct grade oil. This is a different oil with it having a wet timing belt and refill and top up the coolant. Have a really good look round, make sure that everything's connected back up and you've got no spare bolts anywhere. And for topping up the coolant, I really love this purge tool from Laser. It removes all the air from the system and then it refills it. So there's no possible chance of any air locks. And we can see visually that there's no leaks on the system. If there was, the gauge would drop to zero. And then once refilling the system, it will put in the correct amount of coolant. And now the engine should run perfectly and we should now have, have no issues with the coolant with any bubbles or combustion gases in there. And that's it folks. Your total guide to changing the head gasket on the 1 litre EcoBoost non-turbo and turbo engine. I really hope that this video has helped you and has answered quite a few questions. If you do have any further questions, just leave us a comment below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks for watching. This has been how to fix it. Why not check out these other interesting EcoBoost videos and we'll see you over there right now.